The O'Charlie's Halftime Show continues here on the UND Television Network. We're joined by head men's golf coach in his first season, Mr. Brent Nickerson. Brent, first off, you're a former letter winner here at U of I, and you follow a guy who is here for four decades. What's it like to follow in the footsteps of uh, Coach Partridge? Well, I'll tell you what, he's, he's taught me a lot. Um, I took over for him actually last year um, in the spring when he got ill a little bit. Uh, but he's led me in the right direction, and, and playing in the program, I knew kind of what was to come. But uh, no, he's he's definitely been, had some had some big shoes to fill, but it's gone very well so far, and, and a lot because of his leadership. Let's talk a little bit about your team now. you got a guy on your team, a sophomore, who set the uh, scoring record last year. We found out that he did it by a, a half a stroke. That's right. He uh, He's having a good sophomore season. Actually, he did it last year as a freshman, uh, averaged 73.06, uh, which beat uh, – former player named Rusty Ripberger by half a shot and for a freshman to come in and do that um, it's pretty tough to do he was actually averaging under par his uh, fall season his freshman year had a little trouble down in Florida during the spring uh, but got it back and still set the single season record another guy on your team that you can welcome back into the mix is a senior and it took a took a year off tell us a little bit about Chris Clemens and what it's like to have a, a guy just reappear on your roster like that Chris is uh, he's a unique story uh, he's a senior this year uh, but I believe he's 26 years old. Uh, he started off at Tri-State University, played there two years, uh, took a year off, um, wasn't real happy up there, uh, came to Coach Partridge and asked him if he'd be interested in him playing for the program. He did. Had a great year in 04, 05, and actually he has the third best single season record uh, in school history here um, his junior year. <clears throat> excuse me, had to have back surgery uh, last year and came to me and asked me if I'd be interested in him coming back again. And uh, we had a, a pretty full roster, so we were kind of up in there on what we wanted to do. And we sat down with him, and he said this is where he wanted to get his education. And he came back and has been a great leader for us and, and is leading us and is second in the conference in scoring with a 72.0 uh, scoring average. So it's been a great addition. Coach, you're getting ready to start your spring schedule now after a very successful fall uh, season. I want to talk a little bit about your first invite, the very first one as a head coach. You guys go out and really tear up the field. Yeah, I didn't have to do much. I just told him to go play. But um, – we did. We set a, uh, a tournament scoring record. The very first tournament I got, I uh, was able to coach the guys uh, over at Heartland Crossing, which was our invite, and shot 10 under par as a team, which was a tournament record. And uh, Chris shot 67, and Justin and, and a kid named Kyle Pearson both shot 69. We had to throw out a 73, and if, if we're able to do that, it was, a, it was a pretty successful start for me. So what kind of goals do you have in mind here for the spring season? Well, they haven't changed from, from when we started. I talked to the guys ahead of time, and we set out and said to win our first tournament was one. We got that accomplished. Uh, we never finished worse than third in the fall season, so to duplicate that this spring would be great. But uh, we want to vie for a conference championship, which we haven't won here in a while, uh, make it to super regionals, and hopefully qualify for nationals. Coach, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Appreciate it. You know, Charlie's halftime show continues right after this. Halftime here at the University of Indianapolis says the Greyhounds take on Northern Kentucky. Gives us a chance to catch up around the Greyhound athletics. I'm here with head women's tennis coach John Venter, who's in his fifth season here on campus. And coach, at first glance, you look and see that you're on four this season, but explain to us the, the reason why you're on four. There's a lot of tough competition there. Yeah, actually, I'm pretty happy with that. We had a lot of tournament action in the fall uh, where we don't score team events. And uh, we've had uh, the hardest part of our schedule right here, which is uh, going to only prove helpful for us later in the season, and suffered a lot of uh, injuries lately with uh, anywhere from gallbladders to knee surgeries to um, tonsillitis, you name it. We've had our share, but we're still competing very well, and I'm very happy with what I've seen so far. Your roster does not have a senior on it. You've got a bulk of girls that have uh, come back back-to-back -back GLBC championships. Tell us a little bit of your outlook for the spring season here. Um, yeah, we have a very strong junior class who came in as freshmen and contributed right away. And we've only, uh, through the last couple of years, added to the strength uh, of our lineup with uh, additional uh, recruits since then. Um, I, I'm very optimistic on, uh, as the spring comes near. Our conference has gotten stronger and stronger across the last two or three years. And we've risen uh, accordingly and, and had some really good luck and were able to, to be successful the last two years. So um, there's a, a fair share of, of healthy competition amongst our conference, but we hope to be right there with them at the end of the season. You've mentioned the conference getting stronger. A lot of teams doing that through the international base. How proud are you to have all of your kids here from Indiana? I am extremely proud of that. Yeah, um, we had last year the number one and two 
uh, ranked uh, American-born players in our region, which included over 30 teams. So um, all of our girls are local. This this uh, city and the state are, is full of tennis talent, and I'm happy to have so much representation on our team. Your squad's been very talented on the court. They've also done it off the court as well. Tell us a little bit about their GPA and their classroom success. Yeah, we have an overall team GPA of 3.6, um, which I'm extremely proud of. Um, all of our girls are extremely uh, devoted to getting degrees and good starts on life and, and getting into careers that, that they want that they can uh, be successful in. Um, we also had the female student athlete of the year last year, um, who was our number one player, Lindsay Fisher. So we've had a lot of success in the classroom as well. Any goals for the spring season as we wrap it up here? Um, our two goals uh, are pretty consistent. Win the conference championship and then advance at least to the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament. We'll look forward to another exciting spring uh, championship season. Good luck to you the rest of the way. Thank you very much. That's uh, head women's tennis coach John Venter. We're back with more after this. Now that looks good. The halftime Oh Charlie show continues. Little energy to try and get you up for the second half. Now let's take a look at the Aqua Systems halftime stats. Mitch? Scott, the stats tell the story. Northern Kentucky comes into the game, tops in the GLBC, 46% from the floor, only 28% in the first half. And of course, the other thing is the eight to two turnover uh, margin. Indianapolis holds that. And also, they've scored nine points off turnovers as UND, and that's been able to take the seven point lead. Now, one of the stats that are not on the screen here, nine blocks for NKU. They come into the game, tops in the GLVC, six blocks a game, but they have nine already here in the first half. Yeah, Northern Kentucky comes into this game leading this conference in field goal percentage, free throw shooting percentage. They are not living up to that billing thus far. They are the number one team in block shots. Okay, we get that, but here's some, a team that averages almost 72 points per game, and they only have 21 at half. Now there are a pair of act academic standouts on this University of Indianapolis women's basketball team. It is Casey Elrich, and she has a 3.25 GPA, and Amanda Norris, the outstanding basketball player, but tough to get much better than that, at 3.97. Amanda has three points in this game, and she is our Office Mac, actually our Office Mac Scholar Athlete of the Game, is the senior forward, Casey Elrich, the senior from Delphi, Indiana. Office Max the official office supplier for the University of Indianapolis is a proud to present today's scholar athlete of the game, senior forward Casey Elrin. Office Max commends Casey's work on the court and in the classroom. Take a look at some of the fans here at Nickerson Hall. Some of them may be a member of the Greyhound Club, supporting all 21 Greyhound teams. Call 317-788-3359. For more information or go online at greyhoundclub.uindy.edu. Join the alumni, parents, and friends who have made a commitment to enhance Greyhound athletics by joining the Greyhound Club. The Greyhound Club is made up of over 1,400 loyal supporters who are annually provide resources for programs involving 440 student athletes and 21 NCAA Division II sports. Visit the GC, that's the Greyhound Club, on the web at greyhoundclub.uindy.edu. There's a pair that's been a part of that Greyhound Club for a long time. Some veterans here at Nickerson Hall as the Greyhounds take the court, ready to go here in the second half. Up 28 to 21 on Northern Kentucky. Some keys here in half number two, Mitch. Well, Scott, it wasn't the prettiest half of basketball in the first half, but that really played into the hands of the Greyhounds. They had nine assists on the 11 buckets, and that's something that obviously Coach Morton is very pleased with. I mean, that is impressive. You hit 11 shots from the floor, and nine of those are coming from assists. That's a great job of finding the open shooter, and that open shooter late in the first half was Carla Mast, who leads all scores with 10, the top scorer for Northern Kentucky. Holds that basketball, Brittany Winter, and she now gives it off to her teammate, Coyote. Dewey Ding up on Coyote. The screen frees up the three-point shot, but content to put it on the floor. Shot clock at 15. Winter eyes the three and hits it, and that's a good start for Norse here in the second half. Ten points for Winter. Mass got caught up in the screen there, and it was just a good wide-open look. Dewey with the basketball, two steals already on the defensive end. She has five points. Back with the basketball, trying to get it inside. It's really been tough going inside for Norris with the bigger Brandon on her. Canary kicks it out, good pump fake. Dribbles in, off the glass, no good. 
and ripping away the rebound is Norris. Thompson almost would have been better off going to her offhand there. A rare miss from behind the arc for Mast. And it's Northern Kentucky basketball. She was able to get to the rack, but she needed one more step. Probably, probably should have reversed layup on it. But pretty good just to get to the rim on that play. Look at the two head coaches in tonight's ball game. Northern Kentucky's win still in her 24th season. Her team is heading to the GLVC tournament. Nearly a steal. Winner thought about the three. Penetrates, forced to kicking it back out. Shot clock is at 10. Falling to the ground and freeing open the free shooter. And hitting the shot is Coyote. Her first two points of the game. That's just a tough break. Brandon knocks away the entry pass. NKU continues to deny that entry pass. It's looking a lot like the very first five minutes of the first half. First half, it was Northern Kentucky jumping out to a 6-0 lead. But the Greyhounds responded with a 9-0 run. And after that, the score was only tied once. The Greyhounds have been in control. Nice pass to the open cutter. And able to hit the bucket is Angie Healy. Her fourth, the assist from Brandon got quite a bit of NKU fans here and they're starting to get into it. They've now tied the score and it's something where NKU has the momentum now. That's just the second tie since the Greyhounds went on that 9-0 run early in the first half. Mast thought about the three, gives it up to Norris and she's short on the 18-footer. She is saying that she was fouled on the arm. Winner now comes down. Northern Kentucky looking to take the lead. Coyote with the basketball out to Brandon. Backdoor cut. Winner knocks it up and in. Boy, the Greyhounds really need to regroup, and I believe that Morin agrees with me. She does. She will call for a timeout. Out of the halftime break, it is all Northern Kentucky. They lead UIndy by two on the UIndy Television Network. A 9-0 run out of the half, and Northern Kentucky takes a two-point lead over the Greyhounds. And head coach Terry Morin, she needed that timeout. She needed to call that timeout. Yeah, we see why the, why the Norths are number 24 in the nation. Um, they struggle the first half. All they do is put together a short run in the second half, and all instantly they have the lead. Mast finds Norris inside. She cannot connect. And controlling the rebound is Healy for Northern Kentucky. Three minutes gone by in the second half. This 9-0 run matches the longest run of the game. That was made earlier by the Greyhounds. Entry pass. Brandon waits for the defender to go by. Can't come up with it. Keeps it alive. But Canary takes away that loose ball. Pushing it is Jessica. All the way. Coast to coast. Up and in. And an important bucket ties this game back up at 30. A nice hoop by Canary. Split the defense. Didn't really have the numbers, but didn't matter. Still got to the rim. Six points for the freshman. Coyote over to Winner. Winner already with five points here in the second half. Coyote with the basketball. Healy back to Winner. Shot clock under 10. Give and go. And the runner will not fall for Healy. Canary with that basketball. This time they'll shut her off from trying to penetrate. Dewey with the basketball. Canary finds Norris, hits it from 17. That's the shot that Norris, that's the one they want to get to her. She is a great free throw shooter. She works on that shot a lot. That's the one that they want to get for her. Five points for the senior playing in her final home game. Nice catch preventing that ball from going into the bench. And there's a foul call, a blocking foul, trying to get to the baseline was Coyote. Here's a look at Katie Dewey, the freshman from Franklin Central. Only 5-6. She has five points in this game, and we have reached the media timeout. The Greyhounds leading 32-30 with 15.45 to go on the UIndy Television Network. We would like to thank everybody who is a part of the UIndy Network, all of the affiliates, hometown sports in Hamilton County, in Noblesville, the producer of UND Sports. Of course, Indiana 9, Clarksville. Hello to everybody in Louisville, the SkyTrack Weather Network with 24 cable systems in central Indiana and Channel 50 in Indianapolis. Of course, Comcast Local and WJTS in Jasper 
Another hello out there to everybody in southern Indiana. The Greyhounds enjoying a two-point lead. The inbound pass rejected on the shot attempt by Winter. And here come the Greyhounds. Jessica Canary with the basketball. Her entry pass knocked away, but she's able to get it back. Thinking about that three, instead decided to go to the lane. And another rejection. This one comes from Brandon. Making double digits now for NKU as they continue to deny any penetration for the Greyhounds. He goes up with the right and just good recovery there. Able to block it out of bounds. Excellent use of that left hand. This is a team that averages six blocks a game, the best in the conference. As Mitch just mentioned, ten already here in this game. And the shot clock winding down, now approaching ten. Mast with the basketball, looking for some help. They need to fire this up. The shot clock down to five. Dewey finds the open shooter. And it's no good off the front of the room. That may have been tipped, but it comes right into the hands of Amanda Norris, who now has seven. We talked at the open about getting Norris involved. She also gets herself involved the offensive glass. That initial shot by Canary with the shot clock winding down may have initially been tipped, but it goes right into the hands of Norris. Here's Winter aggressively going along the line. Can't get it to fall on the runner. And after a 9-0 run to open up this second half, was put on the board. It's the Greyhounds who have answered. Mast now has 12 points, and the Greyhounds have matched that with an 8-0 run of their own. What a great pass there by Thompson, able to find Mast underneath. A game of runs here in the second half. The Greyhounds have that lead up to six. There's a three ball in the corner, and it's good. Hitting the wide open shot is Karen Krieger. That's a big bucket for NKU. We had mentioned that Neither team has really held that big of a lead, and that was, UND had the momentum, momentum right there, and NKU was able to thwart it. Krieger averages 10 points a game. That is her first three of the night. Norris has it down low, trying to go up against the bigger Brandon, and that is rejection number 11 on the night. Three-point lead. Nice pass. Off the glass, can't go, and the rebound control. Mast with the basketball. Carler Jr. from New Buffalo, Michigan. Gets that basketball down low, and again, a blocked shot out of bounds. Greyhounds will have it underneath, and the shot clock will have 17. Well, that, that makes a dozen blocks, but if you look at Coach Morin, she's uh, conferring with the officials. She thinks there's contact on each of these blocks. So over the back is what the coach is hoping for. Dewey thought about the three, penetrates, kicks it out with that basketball. Down low. She'll try it again, and another block, and this time the lobbying works, and you can hear the crowd for both sides cheering for the Greyhounds and disgust for Northern Kentucky. Yeah, I think, I think Coach Morin bought that call because that one looked cleaner than the first one. Only the second foul on Casey Brandon and Amanda Norris, who is one for two from the stripe, will shoot a pair. Good. Good determination for UND. They're not going to let NKU change how they want to play their offense. They're just going to keep going after it. Trying to build this lead. And Norris hits it. Five-point lead. Norris with nine. And some full-court pressure the first time we've seen this tonight. Winner triggers in the offense to Coyote. Winner trying to get it inside to Healy. Can't do it. 15 on the shot clock. Winner waving for that ball frantically. Gets it. Can't come away at the shot. Norris has the rebound knocked away right into the hands of Brandon. And she has herself her eighth point of the game. Brandon had good positioning there and just was able to snag it away from Norris. Masked with the basketball, guarded by Winner. High pass, controlled by Norris in front of the Greyhounds bench. Canary to Dewey. Thought about the 18-footer, instead spins, kicks it out in the turnover, and it's knocked out of bounds, and it will remain Greyhounds basketball, but three seconds are on the shot clock. And you can see head coach Morin trying to tell her team. Coach Winstall was not happy with that call. She thought that Thompson had dribbled it out of bounds and can't really tell by that call, by that look. But Greyhounds keep the ball. quick timeout is called with UND up by three on the UND television network.
Greyhounds leading by three, timeout called. UND will have the basketball, but only three seconds on the shot clock. Quick inbound. There's the shot from the corner. No good, and the rebound pulled down by Northern Kentucky. Mast had a good look. Good offensive set out of the timeout. Northern Kentucky underneath. There's Casey Brandon. Ten points. Second Northern Kentucky player in double figures, trailing only that of her teammate winner, who has 12. Back to a one-point lead. Thompson with the basketball. Out to Mass. Quick three from straight on, and she's short. Knew it. She went after the basketball, and Dewey somehow comes away with it. 5-6, the freshman gets the rebound, a fresh shot clock. Norris penetrates. Body, no call. And the rebound pulled by Northern Kentucky. Well, Scott, officially we're at 13 blocks for NKU. That breaks their own GLVC mark from this season of 12, said earlier the season. The three look by Keone, no good. Winner saves it underneath their own basket, but to the Greyhounds, frustration on the head coach for Winstall for Northern Kentucky. That was not the shot that she wanted. Norris with nine points in this game. Seven of those coming in the second half. Bad pass, and the turnover goes to Northern Kentucky. Down by one, winner penetrates. Good pass underneath, and Brandon is finding some wide open looks. Greyhound got caught up in the screens there, and Brandon was wide open. Um, she's going to make every one of those. Brandon averaging nine points a game, has 12, six of those here in the second half, and Northern Kentucky regains the lead. Pass underneath. Norris clears some space and hits it. Norris went to a different look that time. Instead of just going straight up, she gave it a bit of a hesitation, just enough for her to get it off the glass. That dribble was able to free some space, get that defender off of her, and she was able to hit the shot 11 for the senior. A jump shot from 15, banks it in. Krieger will take it. And a back and forth seesaw game with 10.20 to go here in the second half. Thompson out top. Mast has her penetration cut off by Winter, gets a hand on the basketball. And now Mast, oh, open three, no good off the iron. Thompson comes in, and it'll be Northern Kentucky basketball. And we will have a pair of substitutions coming into the game. We will get you those after this timeout. A good basketball game here at Nickerson Hall. UND trailing by one on the UND Television Network. The GLVC tournament is right around the corner. Here all of the action and here are the Greyhounds on WICR FM 88.7. March 2nd through the 4th. It is already March. That's the GLVC tournament at Evansville. And here the NCAA Division II Great Lakes Regional. Here all that action March 9th through the 12th. This is a tournament-like game here at Nickerson Hall. A one-point game. It has been an exciting second half. And has seen the visitors, Northern Kentucky, come out of the half on a 9-0 run. The Greyhounds responded with an 8-0 run. And it's a one-point game. The visitors with the basketball. Coach Morton trying to get a spark off the bench, bringing in her seniors, Tarn Montgomery and Mandy Gary. Carmen Graham has also checked in the game. That's for the visitors. There's a three ball on the way. And it counts for Krieger. She has eight points, all of them here in the second half. One of the top scorers on this team. And it's a four-point lead. The largest since it was six to nothing out of the game for Northern Kentucky. Norris answers with her own. All day long from there, we've seen it. She gets an open look there, she's gonna knock it down. 10 in the second half for the senior. Back and forth we go. Krieger with that basketball on the left side. Over to Healy. Winner uses the screen and it's a moving screen. It's a little easier to use those ones. She was moving a bit. She was moving, didn't, wasn't quite set. Tough to take a call like that that far from the basket, but we'll uh, take it. That's also tough when you know that the center now has three fouls for Northern Kentucky. Chance for the Greyhounds to tie it up. Garriac triggers that offense and that shot block. Norris crashes into the support to save it. Her teammate can't get it up and in. That was masked. Boy, Norris playing like a senior in her final game. Winner with the basketball. Nice crossover to free it up. Doesn't go for the shot. Underneath, Coyote blocked by the bottom of the rim. 
Garriott as the penetration stopped. Cross court, there's the three, no good from Mast, and a rebound. A lot more up and down than we were used to seeing in the first half, and I think this favors NKU, so hopefully the Greyhounds can slow things down a bit. NKU only 21 points at the half, and that layup now gives them 46. And for winner, her 14th point. GLVC Women's Player of the Week. Averaging almost 12 a game, and she has 14 here tonight. Ariat decides to pull up just inside the three-point line. Can't hit the shot. Good block out. These empty possessions are really going to start piling up for U Indy. They're going to need to get some defensive pressure here, force a turnover. And Northern Kentucky is going back to dominating on the glass. Pass underneath. Healy, still with three fouls, is able to get that shot up. She has six, and it's a six-point lead, the largest, matching the largest of the night for Northern Kentucky. Montgomery. And Garriott has it go off of her hand. Good aggressive defense, and we have come to another timeout. The Greyhounds falling behind, 7.36 remaining. They trail 48-42 on the UND Television Network. Scott McCauley and Mitch Wigness, not only is she smart, she can play some basketball. Amanda Norris, 13 points, 7 rebounds, and we've already mentioned the 3.97 GPA. The seniors having a heck of a night. And Scott, she's 3 points shy of her 10th double-double for her career. But her Greyhounds are trailing by 6. Northern Kentucky, ranked 24th, has the basketball underneath and up with the shot, and it's off the glass and good. Recently checking the game, Carmen Graham, she has 4, and it's the largest lead of the night for the visitors. Norris screaming for that basketball. Baseline, can't get it. Tries to follow her own shot with the rebound. Northern Kentucky limiting just one shot possessions for the Greyhounds. And that was key to the UND's coming back in the first half. They were able to get those offensive boards. Not happening here in the second half. Under seven minutes to play. Shot from the corner, no good. And the rebound by Allie Opfer. Senior brings it up from Herndon, Virginia. Transfer from UNC Asheville. Looking for someone to give that basketball to. Allie, a multi-sport athlete here at UND. She also played women's soccer, who won the GLBC tournament this past season. Montgomery penetrates off balance. Left-handed layup won't go. And Northern Kentucky using their size, not only to block shots, but to start to dominate on the boards here in the second half. Coyote the pass underneath. Graham, another off-balance shot off the glass and good. Give her six, and that's two buckets in the last couple of possessions for the senior from Kettering, Ohio. The Greyhounds are going to have to find a way to deny the entry pass. Once you get it that low, it's too hard to defend. Garriak will put up a three, and that's a much-needed shot that brings her teammates and the crowd to their feet. That's really a big shot. NKU had built a 10-point lead. They had momentum. Another steal here, or another defensive effort. The Greyhounds get right back into a two-possession ball game. the give-and-go. Healy, cross-court pass. The three ball is up, and that is the third three in the second half for Karen Krieger. All 11 of her points coming after the break. Back up to a 10-point lead. Krieger matching the three by Garriott. Up for with the basketball. Norris outside the arc. That's not her game. Garriott penetrates, uses the left hand. And it won't go. And content to walk it up at the five-minute mark is Northern Kentucky. You mentioned, Mitch, their fan base. That's an easy trip for this school just across the river near Cincinnati. And the foul is on the floor. That will be on Garriott. You're getting to the point now where the clock really becomes a factor, especially with a double-digit lead. Wholesale substitutions. Jessica Canary, Katie Dewey, and Carla Mast check in, taking a seat. Taryn Montgomery, Ale Opfer, and also Deanna Thompson. See on the replay, a little bump on the floor, so no shots. Shot clock at 25. Ten-point lead for Northern Kentucky. Brittany Winter with the basketball, penetrates off the glass, won't go. Big rebound by Brandon, and Dewey reaches in. 
And Brandon will go to the line. Scott, after NKU shot 28% in the first half, they are now shooting close to 60% in the second half to get right back to their, their average. They're at 45% right now. Here's the shot by Winter. Dewey just reaching in. And that's a tough spot. Dewey is there wanting to get the rebound, but at 5-6, no chance against Brandon, who misses the shot. So a big free throw miss. Not just two for five from the stripe is Brandon. They're saying that foul was... She missed them both? Missed them both. 45-55, Greyhounds trailing. Three ball masked, no good. Another rebound, and they will call a reach-in foul. Mast put up the shot, then charged in. Good look at her as she jogs back down the court. Mast, the junior. Mast was looking for a try to get a tie up with the possession going to the Greyhounds, but unable to get that call. 10 point lead, approaching the four minute mark. Three ball, top of the key, no good. Ball tapped free, Mast has it on the break. She'll keep going in, contact, and a blocking foul, got the bucket. Mass switching over to her right hand, able to get it off, even though she, she had it pinned against her hip. Still able to get it off, off the glass, and now she'll go to the line and try and get three. And she will try and complete that three-point play after this timeout. You are listening and watching the UND Television Network. UND trailing 55 to 47. We would like to thank UPS, one of our fine corporate sponsors here on the UND Television Network. And an Edie's Great Greyhound moment. March of 1993, women's basketball hosts the first Division II Great Lakes Regional for the first time ever back in 93, that Edie's Great Greyhounds moment. And Mitch, it looked like the Greyhounds were ready to create another great moment here against this 24th ranked Northern Kentucky team, but not only have they made adjustments at half, they're going back to doing what they've been doing so well all season, and that's shoot the basketball. Yep, the Greyhounds held the Norse to 21 points in the first half, and now they've been outscored 34 to 19 already here in the second half. So the Norse, you're not going to shut them out for 40 minutes. You just want to slow them down. Carla Mass completes the three-point play out of our timeout. She has 15 points, seven-point lead. Trying to go back to that pressure of the Greyhounds with 3.45 to go in the basketball game. Coyote has it. This has been a quick second half. Both of these teams playing crisp, but especially Northern Kentucky on the offensive side. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Coyote with the basketball. Winner in the corner, cross-court pass. Finding the open shooter. It's Krieger, and it's no good. Rebound Dewey. And the Greyhounds find themselves down only seven points despite only shooting 30% from the floor. A lot of that from getting rebounds from other than their their backcourt, their frontcourt. So the main scorers in this game have been Mast and Norris. And Mast can't get it to go and Norris could not find the rebound. Three minutes remaining. The winner, the open shot. And an air ball misses everything. Garriak able to pick up the rebound and pushing it up the court, an aggressive pass, but it was last touch by Coyote. That's a dangerous pass, trying to throw that on that break. Carey not quite able to get to it. Coyote touched it there at the end, so Greyhounds keep possession. It's like defensive back work for Brandon. Just holds her hand up, deny the receiver. But the Greyhounds fortunate to still have that basketball after the dangerous pass. Winner with 14 points and 11 blocks for Casey Brandon in this basketball game. Thought she had her 12th, but it's up and good for Norris. She has 15 points and is the leading scorer for both teams. Norris went to the spin move there, was able to pull Cassie off of her strong foot, able to get it off the glass. Well, they missed Brandon wide open underneath, but content to take the air out of the basketball as we approach two minutes. Winner out top to Coyote. Shot clock at five. 
Krieger dribbles into the corner. Shot clock now under four. Keone, an extra pass off the glass. And how about that? Perfect use of the 30-second clock. That's a heartbreaker. I didn't think they had enough time to get it underneath. They did. Keone threaded the needle there, and they were able to get the bucket. Eight points for Healy. A seven-point lead. After all that defensive effort, you give up the bucket. And on the offensive end, Canary can't hit. And a foul on the rebound to Keone. Greyhounds are getting to the point where they're going to have to start fouling intentionally now. Trailing seven with just a minute 40 left. Not quite at that point yet, but they're going to get to the point where they're going to have to send NKU to the line to win this game. Here comes the pressure. And Mast is simply denying the basketball to winner. And Northern Kentucky is going to have to burn a timeout. Great pressure. Good change of pace in the final 90 seconds of this front of this of this game. As I said, not, not quite a chance to to have to follow at this point if you play defense like that. Well, Mitch, when we look at the way the second half has gone, the 9-0 run for Northern Kentucky, and knowing how talented this team is, a team that is going to be in the GLVC tournament, you thought, well, maybe that's it. We give a lot of credit to the Greyhounds. Answering back with an 8-0 run, and a lot of it has been because of the senior, Amanda Norris. She has 13 points, 12 points, excuse me, all in the second half. Absolutely. She's a gritty player, and, and this is a gritty team. They, that's, they grind out victories. That's how the Greyhounds are able to pull off upsets, especially in front of the home court here. And they are led by their leader, Miss Amanda Norris, who does everything she can and gives 110% just about every time. Good shot of Nickerson Hall, packed the house. Here on the final home game, final game of the regular season for the seniors and the Greyhounds. Northern Kentucky breaks the press with a lob pass to winner. And she will wisely pull it back. 90 seconds remaining in this game. Northern Kentucky in control up by seven. Shot clock is at 10. Coyote with the basketball. And the pass knocked away. Here comes Carla Mast. Mast will slow it up. But down by seven. They need to get a shot up quick. Yeah, she didn't have the numbers, but nobody was following her, so she had to hold up a little bit. Time is winding down. Garriott puts up the shot, 12th block for Brandon here tonight. And Dewey picks up her third steal. Out top to Canary, three ball from Garriott, no good off the rim. Loose ball, and it goes to Northern Kentucky. Wow, big possession there. A Garriott three would have cut it to four. Greyhounds, Greyhounds do keep the basketball though, as the tip there. And that tip was all created by Dewey coming up with her third steal, finding the open shooter, it would not fall. Greyhounds trail by seven on the UIndy Television Network. Seven point deficit facing the Greyhounds with the basketball underneath. Scott McCauley and Mitch Wigness and a turnover, a costly turnover on the inbound pass. And Northern Kentucky, some relief on the looks of those young ladies' faces, but the competitiveness still going for Coach Morin, knowing there's still some time left. Krieger anticipated that pass and just stepped right in front of it and was able to pull it off. Krieger now with the basketball. Greyhounds are forced to foul here. Force or maybe pull up a 10 second and Dewey will foul on the body in the reach in. Katie Dewey, she will be back for three more years, just the freshman from Franklin Central. Five points in this game, but for the seniors, Amanda Norris, Taryn Montgomery, Mandy Garriak, Allie Opfer, and Casey Elric. Their careers are winding down here in a Greyhounds uniform. We talked about the five seniors, and they've meant a lot to this program, but the cupboard's not bare. The future looks very bright. There's a pair of freshmen that are in the starting lineup. We've got a Carla Mast, who's a, who will be a senior next year, so the cupboard's not bare for more next season. Pete misses the front end. 30 seconds remaining, need to get a shot up here quick. Mass trying to free up, puts up the three, won't draw iron, and the rebound by Coyote. She clears it to winner, and the senior throws it away. Norris has it, Garriott penetrates, tries for the easy two, gets it, and a foul. What a great play there by Garriott. Went to her offhand, was able to get the scoop, left-handed. Here she gets right past Coyote. Help defense doesn't get there in time. She puts it off the glass. So she was clocked right across the face. Timeout is called. 
and we will have free throws after this timeout. Aggressive move the whole time. You're thinking you need a three, you need a three, but if that lane opens up, good aggressive play. Absolutely, you cut it. To, either way, you're going to need more than one, more than one bucket. You're down to five. You're going to need a steal here or possibly free throws. Good shot of Alio, my hero. That's for Ali Opfer. Another sign we saw over by that group. I love my roommate. Students coming out here in full force, even on a night when the weather, we had that shot earlier. The weather's not so great. Plenty of signs. Isabel Renrick, 5'9", sophomore from Gary. She went to Westside. Her family comes down to support her. You mentioned that cupboard is not bare. Renrick, she's a sophomore. You have Kirshner, a freshman from Ben Davis. Those two gals have not played here yet, yet tonight. But you look at Dewey, a freshman, some important minutes. Canary, a freshman, some important minutes. This Greyhounds team gaining some valuable experience from some youngsters in the lineup. Well, I think the hope is that Renrick will, will gain more experience next year. We'll be able to move into that starting lineup. She played a lot more last year as a freshman. And she's just been over, over too many seniors in front of her and, and too much talent in front of her right now. And hopefully she'll be able to gain some more experience and really help out the Greyhounds next season. Here's that sign. Congrats to the seniors. 16 seconds remaining in the game. Greyhounds down by five. They led 28-21 at the half. Northern Kentucky has stormed back. Garriac trying to complete the three-point play, and she does six points here on the ball game. The senior from Morgantown, Indiana, transferred from Xavier. Full court pressure, 16 seconds on the clock. You'd expect a quick foul. There's the pass in. Healy has it. And Norris trying to foul on the third attempt. <laughs> they finally give it to her, and Healy will head to the free throw line. Well, she, she burned an extra couple seconds there, even though Norris was banging away at her there and trying to get the foul. You know, Healy, an 84% free throw shooter, has not shot a free throw here tonight. Northern Kentucky team tops in the GLVC when it comes to free throws. From Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Healy with eight points on the night, seeking her ninth. And as you'd expect from an 84% free throw shooter, she nails it. Maybe a young future Greyhound watching on. Second one is up, no good. And the rebound by Norris. 10 seconds on the clock, yeah. Garriak has the basketball. They really need to push it here. Garriak doesn't have a shot. Mast will put it up, it's partially blocked. And it's controlled by Northern Kentucky. And a foul is called with .4 seconds on the clock. That's kind of how this game has gone, a block shot. That's probably the way this game should end with Northern Kentucky really just 14 block shots by my unofficial total, and that's unreal, really. And 12 of those 14 coming from Casey Brennan to go along with their 12 points. And Brennan will check out, has a big smile on her face. And now the seniors check out for the Greyhounds. Amanda Norris to an ovation. Tough way to have it end. 15 points. 12 of those coming in the second half. She receives a hug from fellow senior Allie Opfer. The free throw is no good. And that is it. And the final score tonight. 58 to 53. Northern Kentucky improves to 20 and 6. While the University of Indianapolis, the Greyhounds fall to 16 and 11 and 9 and 10 in GLVC play. We will come back with the One America post game show, as well as our final statistics for this game. As you see the team's exit, the seniors getting some hugs from the opposing coaches. Very good game from these seniors here on the UND Television Network. Good look at the Greyhounds logo on the One America post game show. One America, help build financial security for life. Check out One America on the web at oneamerica.com. Scott McCauley and Mitch Wigness, let's take a look at the final stats in this game, a game in which the Greyhounds had the lead at the half, but they end up falling tonight to Northern Kentucky. Yeah, Scott, first half, Northern Kentucky only had 21 points, but they were able to come back in the second half, score 37 points. They end up with 42.1% from the floor. They shot 37.5% from three-point range. 
That's in comparison to the Greyhounds, who didn't quite make it to 30% from the floor. Even though it was a five-point game, they only shot 29.6%. Well, it was not for lack of effort, especially from a senior. Our Greyhound Club Offensive Player of the Game, it's the 5'10 senior from Springport, Indiana, and Shenandoah High School, Amanda Norris. She scores 15 points in her final game, 12 of those coming in the second half. And she had eight rebounds as well, and as... As per usual with her, she gave 120%. Raise trash defensive player of the game. This is easy. It's Katie Dewey. The 5'6 freshman came in, one of the top stealers in this league. She records five steals tonight. Raise trash is a family-owned business that has been providing the Indianapolis area with quality recycling and waste disposal services since 1965. From residential to commercial to industrial, Raise Trash Service does it all. Five steals for Katie Dewey. Outstanding. Yeah, that's her seventh game with more than five steals already on the season. And as those two were starters, Dewey and Norris, our Subway sub of the game. The Subway location at 936 East Hannah Avenue has supported Greyhound Athletics for over 10 years. And we're proud to support the Crimson and Gray and the Subway sub of the game. Mandy Garriak, the senior from Morgantown, comes off the bench to hit a big three, and she ends the night with six points. Yeah, Mandy Garriak was a former starter, and she... Coach Moore thought she was better off the bench, could use that spark, and she did. She had a great spark for the Greyhounds tonight. 58-53 to 53 is the final score as the Greyhound season comes to an end. 16-11 and 11 overall, 9-10 and 10 in the GLVC. Some final thoughts here on the One America postgame show. Mitch, great first half. Northern Kentucky just had a little bit more in the second half. Well, it was tough to overcome 14 blocks for sure, but the fact that it was a five-point game really says something about the Greyhounds' commitment to doing what they wanted to do on the offensive end. And the final scores, Amanda Norris leads the Greyhounds with 15. Actually, that matches Carla Mast, who had 15 as well. Jessica Canary had six. Mandy Garriak had six. Katie Dewey had five points. For the winners, Northern Kentucky, Casey Brandon, 12 points, 12 block shots. Karen Krieger, huge in the second half, 11 points, all of them in the second half. And the leading score was the senior, Brittany Winner. Thanks to everybody who is a part of this program here tonight as they see the Greyhounds lose by a final of 58 to 53. We'll take a timeout. We're, we're going to say goodbye. We're out of here. From Nickerson Hall, for Scott McCauley and Mitch Wigness, thanks to everyone a part of this on the UND Television Network.